coming to you from the Henry Ford Museum in Michigan. And there's so many amazing things in this museum that rather than having them get lost in one big video, I'm gonna show you little snippets of amazing things that I find as I'm walking through here. And for this particular video, I wanna show you something that is very special, something that sparked an entire movement, and it's this bus right down here, this restored bus. The bus that Rosa Parks became famous for. Check this out. Back in 1955, down in Montgomery, Alabama, December 1st, it was a Thursday. And during this time, you do have segregation laws in effect, so there are sections on buses. If you were African American and you were sitting in the middle section, you could not sit in front of or in the same row as a white person. That's what gets Rosa into trouble. Yeah, she was on her way home from work. Maybe the third stop, by the third stop, I'm not really sure how long it was till that third stop. But, um, yeah. And she was in this seat? Mm -hmm. Wow. So that was the first seat of the mixed section. Anybody could sit in those middle three rows, um, African American or white. Um, the only catch was if you were African American, you could not sit in front of or in the same row as a white person in that middle section. Not even in front of. The very back, starting at that pole, is African American only. And this front section, these first 10 seats, is white only. So even if this front section was empty, if you were African American, you could not walk through the So she's sitting where you are. An African American gentleman on the window seat and two African American ladies across from them. Perfectly fine. This section fills up with white passengers. That 11th white person gets on. This whole row had to give up their seat by law for that one white person. And James Blake, the driver, he told those four to get up and move. The three reluctantly go back, and Rosa stays. He tells Rosa once more to get up and move. She says no. <coughs> well, I'll have to call the police. Go ahead. So the police come, and as they're arresting her, she's asking them, why are you doing this? Well, me, it's the law. And she spends about two hours in jail. Now, she's a duck to in the community because she's a member of the local NAACP down there. So, word gets out that she's been arrested and her friends come and bail her out. Word keeps spreading and Martin Luther King Jr. ends up hearing about this. He's a young man at this time, only about 26 years old. He's been in Montgomery six months. And he says, okay, come Monday morning, we're starting a bus boycott. None of us are riding these buses. And they figure it's going to last maybe a couple of days, maybe a week. It lasts over a year. 381 days. They walk, they bike, they carpool. Now the bus company is losing so much money, it's going to go into bankruptcy if it doesn't do something soon. So they have to raise their fare from 10 cents to 15. Those left riding the buses are getting angry, so they decide to give Rosa death threats over the phone and through the mail. There's also a Supreme Court case going on at this time, not Rosa's, but somebody else in a similar situation. That court case decides that it's against the law for you to tell people where they're going to sit on buses. When that ruling comes down, the boycott ends. By this time, it's late December of 56. Rosa and her husband have both lost their jobs down there in Montgomery due to the boycott. So they decide in early January of 57 to move up here to Detroit. When they come up here, they bring her mother along. They keep it quiet, and they keep a low profile. Not many people know that she's here. So time does pass, and her mother and her husband pass away. All that's left up here is her. So a prominent businessman in the city, Mike Illich, he created Little Sisters Pizza, um, owned the Red Wings and the Tigers. So he takes her under his protection puts her in a nicer neighborhood and pays for all her living expenses until she passes. Rosa died at the age of 92 in 2005 and she's buried at Woodlawn Cemetery in Detroit with her family.
Where did they find the bus? Um, they found it in a farmer's field down in Montgomery, Alabama. Wow. Um, so after it was decommissioned in 71, it was bought by a local farmer down there. Gutted, he gutted it and used it as a tool shed for 30 years. Wow. It ended up on eBay and the Henry Ford Museum bought it, beat out a bunch of other uh, museums like the Smithsonian and things like that. Paid four hundred thousand dollars for this thing, or four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then they had to restore it for another two hundred thousand. And here it is. Restored history. And no matter what you feel, the girls who are engaged. So there you go, Rosa Parks bus. Really, the the situation that started an incredible movement. Really interesting to see. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of different things around this amazing museum. The Henry Ford Museum is unmatched, in my opinion. So stay tuned for some more really incredible pieces of history like this.